Hello everyone, I'm Anne Hodgson and I'm here with Adrian Pilbream. We're here in Paris at the uh, BSIC Summer Symposium. And we're well into the conference. It's uh, coming towards the end. Mm -hmm. And um, Adrian, you gave a talk today. You gave a workshop. I did, I did yes, yes. A rather um, rushed workshop. 45 minutes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On intercultural uh, training, on, on skills, on activities for intercultural training. Now, you've been with BSIC since the beginnings, haven't you? Pretty much since the very beginning. I remember being involved in some kind of uh, loose committee. I think anyone who turned up on the day became a member of the committee uh, at that time, and we put something together. And I can't remember the early days now. Um, when the six, mm -hmm. as they are, started, and um, and then I kind of I think s stepped back a bit, wasn't so involved, and then I became much more involved in the 90s. I was on the committee when it was a more formal body. I was treasurer um, through the 90s, and our big focus then was uh, extending into Central and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. So we organised a lot of basic events in well, all over the place, Poland and. Republic and Russia, a lot of things in Russia. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And you've been involved as well in teacher training for many years. Yep, yeah, in fact, from almost uh, as I started my career in teaching business English, probably hmm, even before, but I but started doing teacher training in 1980 in London. Uh, I think at that time there was no business English teacher training going on at all. We were asked to, to do something uh, and we, we ran a, an evening class in London, so a weekly to our evening class colleague of mine and I for about 10 weeks. And that was the very first thing we did. And after that we started doing a five day intensive course on teaching business English, which really was very popular. And a little later, the I think it was I, the um, London Chamber of Commerce and Industry started a, a certificate in business English, a 50-hour course. So we transformed our five-day course into a basically a 10-day course, a two-week course. So we've been doing this. The LCCI uh, Cert TV? Well, it was the LCCI Cert TEP. Mm -hmm. Then they stopped, and then the university um, goes. Um, I don't know, but one of the London universities um, took it up and then continued, and then they stopped, mm -hmm. and then there was a sort of big gap, and then more recently Trinity English UK has picked up and started with the CERT IBED, which we also run in Bar. Um, I'm not involved in it anymore, I've kind of moved on into the intercultural area, so two of my colleagues not doing that. And as you say, you've moved on. Yeah. Could you could you describe? Has this been a, a, a personal trend, or do you see a general trend um, that you could describe? Um, well, it, it, I think naturally that if you're teaching business English, you're teaching people to communicate internationally. And so, as I became more aware of, of intercultural topics and, and the field of intercultural training, which I didn't know existed at first became more interested in that and just gradually moved more into that area, so keeping my hand uh, in on the business English but moving more and more towards intercultural training and then starting in 2005 a train a training course sort of modelled on the business English one we've done right. uh, to say okay well it would be good to, to, because it's quite difficult for people to really get a full overview of what is intercultural training they can come to like a 45 minute session that I've just done mm -hmm. and that's all very nice and they learn a few activities but they don't really know how can they put a course together that would use these activities and and so on so it's taking you know, different activities and thinking how can you actually analyze the needs of a particular group and then start to put, design a course over one day or two days whatever it is so you had the first had the first part of raising awareness and the mm -hmm. second part of designing activities and yeah. suites of activities yeah. to, yeah. to uh, train up your, your and, and, and planning a course mm -hmm. as well as mm -hmm. the final thing how do you put it all together mm -hmm. to actually plan a day or two days or mm -hmm. a series some people working in higher education maybe doing a 
module over 20 weeks or something. Do you see new needs, uh, different needs, changes in needs um, from the teachers or trainers that you train up? Say, uh, I mean, a big thing I've noticed, and I'm so it's a challenge for me as well, is is the use of technology. That 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 is now kind of almost assumed by learners, particularly younger one, any you know, student age learners. They're so comfortable with all kinds of technology that um, and there are so many possibilities of you know, using things like YouTube and, and, and podcasts and internet and and you know, all of that, whatever kind of training it is. So I think that's that's a definite. It's been a trend for some time, but it's continuing and developing. That's in the delivery of your courses, and from the content side, the needs of knowledge and, and skills, mm. personal abilities uh, that a teacher needs to develop? I think even from the very beginning, it was, I think you, as a business English teacher, going back to that, you've got to be interested in business or in the professional world or in the business world, broadly speaking. If you're not interested in that, then you're not really going to enjoy doing it. And you're not going to do it very well. So that's important. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for giving us this insight and, and giving us this interview. Pleasure. Yeah. Um, are you going to be listening to any further talks?